Fucked up. But it's new shit now. Trump is in there. And Trump didn't wait. We didn't have to worry what the fuck Trump was finna do. Trump got on that shit immediately. <laughs> Day one, Trump was on his shit. He announced his motherfucking cabinet. It was Hitler, Satan, Darth Vader. God damn, Trump. What the fuck is you finna do? He showed up with stormtroopers and shit. Dun, 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 dun. Trump don't give a fuck. Trump don't follow nobody's rules. The president is supposed to be at the White House. Our president is wherever the fuck he want to be. He in New York, he in the South, playing golf. Our president don't give a fuck. They used to say, will your president be awake at 3 o'clock in the morning? to answer the phone. If it rings, shit, chair. Yeah, our president is up. Our president is a vampire. That motherfucker sent 23 tweets at 1230. What the fuck is you talking about? That motherfucker is on it. <laughs> Aight. If they had a nice, sensible president, now we finna see what America is like with a motherfucking bully in that bitch. <laughs> Trump don't give up. Fuck! The president's supposed to think of something, then talk about it with the Senate and the Congress, pass a bill, and then do it. Trump don't give a fuck. Trump sent off 50 missiles to Syria while he was in his bathroom with an Xbox One controller. Just... See what they say when they see that shit. <laughs> Trump don't give a fuck. That motherfucker is on it, whatever the fuck it is. Barack Obama was in office eight years, he did eight things. <laughs> He's in office eight years, he did eight things. Trump been in office a hundred days, he done done a hundred fucked up things. <laughs> Every time he wake up, he just signed another fucked up piece of paper. Wait till they see this when they wake the fuck up since they want to talk. Trump do not sleep. He don't play by no rules. He don't care what the rule history month. He don't even know which niggas is which. <laughs> he thought Ben Carson was Frederick Douglass. <laughs> Some of y'all don't even believe me. He looked right at Ben Carson. He said that Frederick Douglass has been doing a great job. He's been getting more and more recognition every day. He looked right at Amorosa and said, and Harriet Tubman has been doing a great job out there in the community as well. It's fucked up. It's getting dangerous out there. As black people, minorities, we used to just being able to watch the news a little bit and then walk off. Not with Trump. Niggas is watching the news like it's the playoffs. <laughs> Did they say anything about niggas yet? <laughs> we got one more day then, one more day. Hispanic people, since y'all in here, I'm gonna let y'all know. Black people is y'all's friends. If they come after y'all, they got to come after us. And I can say that because we know if they start coming after y'all, We next anyway. <laughs> Don't worry, Hispanic people. We will open up that Underground Railroad so quick. We got the blueprints. <laughs> Black people, we got enough problems in America. We don't need no more problems. We know once they start coming for Hispanics, it's going to be a bunch of light-skinned niggas stuck at the border. <laughs> niggas just say, I'm not supposed to be here. I don't even speak Spanish. <laughs> Trump in office, we don't know what the fuck may happen next. We thought he was gonna be a war right away. We was like, we can't figure out who gonna catch it first. Is it gonna be Russia? Is it gonna be China, Syria, Iran, Iraq, North Korea? Who the fuck is finna get? <laughs> Find out 
public enemy number one is Kathy Griffin. <laughs> Kathy Griffin? <laughs> Ain't that a bitch? <laughs> fuck out of here. Fucking humor. What the fuck? You the president now. You can't take a joke, motherfucker. You announce your presidency on Comedy Central, motherfucker, after a roast. It's fucked up. But I tried to tell people on the last tour, it was called Conspiracy Theory. I tried to tell people what the fuck was finna happen, and it done fucked around and happened. <laughs> we said Trump had a chance because he was exciting and America loves excitement. And Trump been saying exciting shit the whole time. He say shit you ain't never heard nobody say ever. Trump said, we are gonna build a wall and we gonna make Mexico pay for it. <laughs> Black people all over the world went, Mexico? <laughs> what type of Mexicans does he know? He must not know no essays or no vatos. <laughs> you ain't finna make them niggas do shit. <laughs> well, why the fuck is we talking about building a motherfucking wall and the Mexican people have shown us they are professional at building a tunnel on your motherfucking ass. <laughs> they broke El Chapo out while they was looking at him. We are... They showed that tunnel. That tunnel was as big as this goddamn stage. Had hardwood floors, linoleum, verba carpet in. Central air conditioning, vending machines. They picked him up in a little golf cart and took him to a burrow. <laughs> I couldn't figure out why the fuck Trump was talking about immigration in the first motherfucking place. His motherfucking bitch ain't from here. <laughs> she from somewhere else. She from Cat Schnatterstan. And white people don't look like that. Y'all need to go check on that white woman. Every time you look at her, she look like a hostage in the interview. She. Someone please help me. I'm not supposed to be here. This is not what I signed up for. I said right then, I said, okay, Trump ain't gonna say no more shit that throw me off guard. Then Trump said the shit that shocked the world. You was watching the news, had your breakfast blunt, and it scared you and your breakfast blunt. <laughs> Trump said, grab him by the pussy. <laughs> We've been shaking bitches' hands and hugging and shit. Trump don't give a fuck. And you can tell he really be grabbing bitches by the pussy, too. Because if you watch the news, Melania will not grab that motherfucker's hand for nothing. Every time she grabs, she grabs for his hand, she do karate. I know where your hands been, motherfucker. You are not. Nigga. I watched, I watched Donald Trump in a press conference, and this motherfucker had all the media gathered, and this nigga literally, literally asked the media to their face to stop finding shit out. I was like, yo, yo, this motherfucker is bugging. And then, I'm not even making this up, his, his lips started sweating. His lips. Have you ever seen a motherfucker's <laughs> lip sweat? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with this nigga's lips? It's like if you're on a plane, right? You ever been on a plane? I, like, I, I get scared to fly. I do it all the time. I be scared on there. And sometimes the plane will hit turbulence. And then I get nervous. But I always look at the flight attendant, and she looks calm, and it makes me feel calm. <laughs> but if that bitch's lips were sweating, <laughs> Like, yo, nigga, why are you lips sweating? What do you know? <laughs> and then, I'm not even making this shit up. This motherfucker grabbed the pot and he goes, you don't know how scary the things I read in my briefings are. What's that, bro? <laughs> That's bad leadership. 
Even as a parent, you think I'm gonna sit my kids there? Hey, little man, come here real quick. I just wanna holler at you for a second. Yo, uh. I'm three months behind on the rent, nigga, and I am worried. Very worried. Go on, go to school and have a productive day, nigga. I was just thinking out loud, getting some shit off my chest. I was like, what the fuck are you doing, bro? This is bad, man. Jesus Christ. All this motherfucker's ideas sound like high people ideas. <laughs> like he doesn't think these things through before he tells us. He just tells us what he's thinking as soon as it occurs to him. This shit sounds nuts. Uh, oh, I'm gonna go to China and I'm gonna get those jobs from China and bring them back here to America. <laughs> For what, nigga? So iPhones can be $9,000? Leave that job in China where it belongs. None of us want to work that hard. What the fuck is he thinking? Because I don't want to make them shits. What the fuck are you doing? Stop trying to give us Chinese jobs. I am going to bring back coal. Coal? even exaggerating. I have never in my life even seen a fucking lump of coal. I honestly don't even know what coal is for. If you're gonna have motherfuckers digging around in the dirt looking for shit, find me some truffles, nigga. That's what I'm about. And these truffle prices are getting out of control. If it gets any worse, I'm gonna be back down to regular butter like everybody else. <laughs> terrible, terrible job. This motherfucker hit North Korea with rap battle threats. Fire and fury, like, yo! Yo, what are you doing? It's fucking Korea, man. Kim Jong-un is a scary motherfucker. He's, he might be as crazy as Trump. Some scary shit. And if you're one of them naive motherfuckers that thinks that a war with Korea is gonna be easy, then you don't play Call of Duty at 3 a.m. like I do. Cause that's when the Koreans play. <laughs> Fucking eight-year-old Korean kid took out my whole goddamn platoon last night. I've never seen somebody in an office so high with the most just basic fucking solutions. Like, you know, we should not let any more Muslims in the country till we can figure out what's going on. Did he just say, figure out what's going on? <laughs> Who doesn't know how to do basic math? Let's count it out, okay? There's been 17 mass shootings in the United States. Four of them were done by Muslims. None of those four Muslims were from any of the seven countries in your stupid ass original band. <laughs> and since he brought it up, the other 13 shootings were done by the Tiki Torch Whites. <laughs> These are facts. And you don't see me trying to ban white people from the show to keep the fucking terrible idea because it's mean and it's racist and most importantly, it would be catastrophic to my bottom line. <laughs> if there were no white people here tonight, I might leave this bitch with $1,800. <laughs> this man needs to realize that we all need each other. And that's why we will never, ever be able to beat China. Because everybody in America is racist and everybody in China is Chinese. This motherfucker called it all wrong. And don't believe the media either, because as all this shit is happening, the media is trying to make us believe that the extremities amongst us are the norms. We can disagree, that's fine. And most of us are keeping a cool head about this shit. You know what I mean? Americans generally respect one another's beliefs, even if they don't share those beliefs. I know I do. 
I respect everybody's beliefs, except Amish people. Because <laughs> they are the only ones that I can say clearly their God is wrong. <laughs> the speed limit is 75 miles an hour in Ohio, and one lane of traffic is buggy. <laughs> Nigga, your God is ridiculous. All the Amish people around my way know me, too. Not from television, obviously. <laughs> they know me from the streets. Because when I see them horse and buggies, I'll pull the Porsche over and talk to them. <laughs> Ezekiel. <laughs> Ezekiel, are you sure that God doesn't want you to have any of this technology or this energy? Huh? Hmm? Huh? I can't hear you, nigga. Let me turn this air condition off. What did you say? And them niggas be like, get away from me, ye. Ye try to tempt me like the devil. Devil? Nah, bro. I'm trying to put you on to the game, Zeke. It's a big world out here, nigga. I just went 25 miles in 30 minutes. That's a day's journey for you. You don't even know what the weather's gonna be tomorrow, do you? <laughs> I do. You don't even know that there's a valuable Pokemon right on you. Now drive away. <laughs> huh? Oh, my vape pen? You wanna hit my vape pen? Oh, sorry, nigga, I'm trying not to get herpes. My bad. <laughs> I've been playing cat and mouse with Herbies for 30 years now, but every night I go to the club, I'll be like, not tonight, Herbies. <laughs> no disrespect, I'm not saying you have Herbies, I'm just saying one out of five people do. So let's just, uh, <laughs> let's just all be careful around this motherfucker and make sure that the, we leave with the lips we came with. Sometimes I think that the media is hard on Trump. Because I'll see shit that they get on him about that doesn't seem bad to me. A like, nigga got on Trump about not staying in the White House enough. Who gives a fuck? This motherfucker was rich. Used to shit in a gold toilet. <laughs> it's true. I don't know if you've ever been to the White House. It looks like a very nice place to work, but I wouldn't want to live in that Scooby-Doo-ass house either. That shit's <laughs> terrifying looking. Imagine you trying to jerk off. <laughs> Shit, Bush didn't stay there either. He was rich too. He was like, fuck that, I'm going to my ranch in Texas. Obama was the first motherfucker to move into the White House like, this is a nice place. <laughs> Look at this rug. The media got on him about putting Jared Kushner in his cabinet, and I didn't think that that was the worst thing he'd done. I mean, he was still early, and I mean, it's not unprecedented. Kennedy had his brother as the attorney general, right? And this motherfucker's a Washington outsider. To be honest with you, I'd probably do the same thing. As a matter of fact, I do. You think I go to a Hollywood meeting with all them white folks by myself? <laughs> I bring my nigga Mac Mittens from the streets. I don't even know his real name. Everybody just calls him Mac Mittens. <laughs> but I know he's not, he's not qualified to even listen to these meetings, but <laughs> this motherfucker just makes me feel good. <laughs> and all the white people look at me like, Dave, do you mind asking your friend Mac Mittens to excuse us so that we can <laughs> talk business? And I say, fuck that. <laughs> Anything you say. And he listened to the whole meeting. And when they done talking, I just look over at Mac Mittens, and if he gives me the signal, meow, meow. I'll sign the papers. It's a gut check. Well, how about this one? Remember when the, it was the day after the election and the president of Taiwan called Donald Trump to congratulate him? And Donald Trump, you know, of course, took the call and talked to the president of Taiwan. Problem with that was, uh, Taiwan doesn't have a president. 
The United States functions on what they call a one China policy, and Taiwan is a renegade province of said China. And Donald Trump didn't know that and picked up the phone and started yammering away, and the media ate his ass up. And I'm not gonna lie, I was laughing like shit. I was like, oh shit, this dumb motherfucker is in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> And then that night, I was in bed drifting off to sleep, and then I had to admit it to myself. I was like, I didn't know that shit either. <laughs> and then I realized the media got the story wrong. The story wasn't that Donald Trump took the call. Nobody told Donald Trump not to take the call. It's terrifying. God damn it, you don't have a Mac Mittens on your team. It wasn't like they were calling the White House, they were calling the switchboard at Trump Towers, and they were getting through, anybody. Mr. President, there's a Ricky Ticky Tabby on the phone for you? <laughs> yes, put him through. Hello, hello, Ricky Ticky, good to talk to you. <laughs> Mr. President, there's a John Jacob Jingleheimer Smith on the phone. Oh, his name is my name too, put him through. <laughs> hello, hello, John Jacob, let's talk business. I came back here where I started because I will shoot my final Netflix special tonight. That's right. And after this shit, it's time to make America wait again. I've done too well. You know, if you black and show business and do too well, it's scary, nigga. Like, you gotta get the fuck out of the casino while the getting's good, while you're still winning. If you don't walk away from the table, that's how niggas get Kevin Harted. <laughs> you already know. That's my man, I'm just saying, if he got a sex tape out, well, it's just a matter of time for me. But you know why I be thinking sometimes I want to stop doing comedy? And, and you know, I don't want to sound like a braggart saying this, but the real, like, reason I want to stop is because I'm too goddamn good at it. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating. I'm, it's not exciting. <laughs> Every night before I come out on stage, I'll be backstage like, I'm sure this is going to go well. <laughs> and it always does. I'm so good at writing jokes, and this is not even an exaggeration. I actually write jokes backwards. <laughs> I will write a punchline with no particular setup in mind. I'll just put it on a scrap of paper, and I'll throw that scrap of paper in my uh, fishbowl. I have a fishbowl in my house filled with random punchlines. And every once in a while, I'll shake the bowl, and I'll dig in there and just pull one out and see if I can make that shit work. And I picked one for this special. It's not an easy punchline to pull off. Are you ready? Yeah. Here it goes. The punchline is, so I kicked her in the pussy. <laughs> I haven't finished the joke yet. I just know whatever happens in the beginning of the joke, at the end of the joke, for some reason, I'm gonna kick somebody in the pussy and it's going to be hilarious. <laughs> you know what's weird? I've always remembered a time when I was